Okay, I wasn't originally going to make this video, but as it turns out, it makes a very good time to test this Sony Handycam CCD TR54. So if you don't see this video, it's because the video didn't come out. But if you do see it, well, it did come out. But anyway, this is the HP DV8000. I got the hard drive cover off. So I'm going to be replacing a hard drive in it today. Ross was kind enough to give me an 80 gigabyte Toshiba drive. I'm going to put that in here. Uh, what I've got in here right now, this is, again, this is a machine that he gave me. This drive came with it over here, and it's working great. I've had two drives here now. I had the original 100 gigabyte drive. That seems to have gone bad. And this, 40 gigabyte, which is no better. The 40 actually seems to work, but it's got bad sectors, and I'd like to get it out of there. So I'm going to see... I guess how good this 80 actually happens to be. If it's any better or any worse, I guess we're going to find it together. So I'm going to pull this off. Jump ring is an issue because these are IDE drives, and there's two of them. But I don't really need to worry about that too much because there are no jumpers on this drive. I don't even know where the jumper for the other thing went. So, anyway. I'll go ahead and try and do this without turning the camera off. This drive should just pop out. I don't remember how exactly it does pop out, but I guess like that. Pull that out. I think this is one of my original drives. Does this have an IBM sticker on it? No, it doesn't. But 09 January 04 is pretty suspicious, so I'm pretty sure that is one of my original drives. Here is the IBM drive, or IBM, Toshiba drive. MK8025 gas. They use that model for their 8.4 gigabyte drives. So, or their 8 gig drives. It says 80 gigabytes on the LBA, but the CHS parameters only add up to 8.4 gigs. So, so that's installed now after some fighting with the screws. So, let's see. Let's go ahead and put it down. Hook it up. Hopefully I didn't bend any pins. Doesn't look like I did. And I'm even going to put all the screws back in it. Because I am a glutton for punishment, and I'm sure that if I put all the screws in, the drive won't work. Although he did tell me that it does work. And I have every reason to believe that it works. Guess we'll find out together. Assuming you get to see this video. I'm even going to install the door on top of this. Now there's one slight problem. Now that I've changed that drive up, there's no OS loaded. So I'm going to be reloading the OS and my choice is an older one. I'm going to put Linux Mint 18 on this because Linux Mint 19 does not run very well. And I haven't investigated why, but I suspect that it's got something to do with the AMD Turion 64 CPU. There are programs like Mix and Java that just don't work. They crash, they have other issues, and I really don't know why they would have issues, just that they do. So, we're going to lift that up. So now you get to see me in the lovely display. Get my, my disk over here from this computer. And, go ahead and Oh, probably should turn the computer on first, right? Eject. Insert disk. Well, it didn't halt catch fire, so obviously the drive must be somewhat good. And hopefully it will boot to the disk. Probably should get the power supply while it's booting. So, Linux Mint. Older release. Yeah, I know, it's an older release, but uh, actually I think this was the machine that I had upgraded or used in the upgrade video from 18 to 19. And that worked until I put the machine in the closet and then the uh, installation broke. I don't know, still don't know what happened there. But uh, actually thinking about it, I think I've had three drives in this as a boot drive. I had the 100, which stopped working. I replaced that with a an 80, which 
wasn't working correctly, and now this 40, which is working, but only barely. So, I decided to replace that. And uh, hopefully this boots in a somewhat decent amount of time, and I don't have to wait for 300 years for it to actually do what it's supposed to do. Get a Linux Mint logo in the middle. I do have to apologize for any of the colors looking possibly washed out, or any of the video looking possibly washed out. This camcorder, I'm in my testing, doesn't seem to take very well to bright lighting, or really lighting at all. You might even be able to see it over there with that computer screen that you're not supposed to be looking at. Um, there's a it, it tends to wash the picture out, and I'm not entirely sure why. I guess it's just something to do with the camcorder. But this is still starting. I'm not going to win any speed records for that. I might go into the disk manager and get rid of partitions before I go to install. That way it doesn't ask me if it wants to install alongside something. Um, do that first. Assuming it's going to work. Hope I'm not getting error messages out of it. And there's no errors yet. That seems to be working okay. The smart data is what I'm more so concerned about other than anything else. Because that'll tell me... I mean, the warnings don't get tripped until it's basically too far gone, but you can look at it and observe it and figure out where the issue lies long before it would ever trip any warning. Uh, I look at it rather rather religiously. Probably a little bit too often, but that is what it is. I got a lot of other projects to do, so I want this to I want this to get going. Sure does take its jolly sweet time. Windows install loads so much faster than this. Yeah, it's upset because the Wi-Fi doesn't have a driver, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'll hook it into my Ethernet if I can happen to get the cable over here. Ooh, I have a text login. Hopefully it's not going to want me to use text mode, because I want the GUI. I know that this works, because I've done it before. Plug it into the Ethernet. If I plug it into the Ethernet, that means when I actually load it up, I can install the Broadcom firmware, because it needs it. Yeah, you got a Turion 64, I think it's a 2 gigahertz CPU, with ATI mobility, what is it? ATI Radeon Express 200M, yeah. I don't know if that was ever something, but it sure isn't now. Wow, is this ever taking its sweet time? Like I said, the Windows install would have loaded probably two or three times over already. That's the one thing about Linux is it's always got to load the full graphical interface before you can start the installer. Ubuntu has it right. You can jump straight into the installer if you want to, but not so much with this. Unless you want to do an OEM install, which I don't. You are offline. You are now online. Alright, so yeah, it does work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to the disks properties. Assuming that I'm smart enough to find it. Disks. I think this probably has gparted on it, but I'm just going to use disks. Alright, 80 gigabyte. Ooh, this had an Apple thing on it. Disk is okay, 92 bad sectors, ouch. But, uh, alright, well, anyway. Mm. Well, I'm going to leave that one alone. That one's fine. But these ones, I'm going to delete them. Yes.
Partition doesn't exist. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. And this. Delete. Oh, there is no partition there. I want to delete that. Alright, how am I supposed to... Format disk. Don't overwrite. I'm going to use MBR because GPT is usually only thing for greater than 2 terabytes. So, yes, get rid of everything. Add a partition. Actually, I'm not even going to add partitions. I just want to get rid of it. So that way it's master boot record. And then I could go over here into the installer. And we can install Linux Mint. It currently has no detected operating systems. Erase disk and install Linux Mint. So let's click on continue. Make sure it grabs the right disk. It does 80 gigabyte. Install now. And then I'll put in all the rest of the details and then I'll come back once it has finished. Okay, well, I accidentally just closed it, but the install finished. I was going to try and reinstall because for whatever reason my network was not working, which is a very strange bug. But now, of course, it is, or it started working halfway through. Hopefully, that doesn't mean my install is going to be screwed up because I had to skip all of the additional package installations. Probably just means I'm going to have to install the MP3 and the all that mess on my own. But I don't know if it was really installing any of it manually anyway, or installing it automatically anyway, so. That's usually what happened the last couple times, put it in the closet for a couple weeks and then bring it back out and it has stopped working. Miraculously. So I'm gonna have to install the wireless. Might as well show you how to do that. It's fairly easy. All you need is access to the terminal. And if I remember right, Oh, go away. Startup thing. If I remember right, that is the package name. Firmware-b43-installer. Of course, it wants the password. Guess we'll find out. Yep. Yes, it is. Yes. Would like to install that. Uh, okay, my network did work. Apparently now it's not working. Oh, what a piece of junk. Okay, well, let's open up a new tab. Yep, it's decided it doesn't want to work again. Okay, give me a minute. Swear, all I had to do was unplug and plug the cable in. I don't know, there must be something wrong with this cable. I should just throw it in the trash. Just where it belongs, really. Okay. So now downloading. Delete old extracted firmware. Extracting new firmware. And done. So now I have to reboot the machine. You can now see down here a blue light we did not see before. So it should work on my wireless network now, which is excellent. Time to see just how bad this drive actually is. So, smart error, and that's better than the other one, which had a smart alert. Huh. No pending sectors. Alright. Low hour drive. Some reallocations, whatever, I don't care about that, as long as that number doesn't grow huge. That's fine. In fact, I think this drive here actually has some... Oops, that wasn't what I wanted. I want the attribute data. Yeah, that one's got some reallocated sectors as well. So, it's not like it's really any better. Low hour drive. I think it was probably brand new when he put it in here. But, uh... Anyway, I think this video has probably gone on for way more than long enough. I think the last thing that we'll probably do is have a look at the whole boot process. But, after that, this video is over. So I don't have anything else to show you. It's just basically installing updates at this point, And those aren't really worth watching. So, 
Plus, I have a couple of other things that I really probably should be getting on with. I think, like I said previously, we'll not win any speed records, but it's not terrible. It should be more than good enough for what I'm going to do with it. It'd be better than using an old drive that's got some problems, so... Saying disk is likely to fail soon. Is it now? So, there you go. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then.